Hello everyone and welcome to the first episode of the GFK Yu-Gi-Oh! channel. Uh, I am your host, Steve Walbaum, or Goat Format King. Um, and today I wanted to give you guys a first look at one of many deck profiles that I'll be doing on this channel. Um, the first one that I really wanted to go through is just the standard um, GOAT deck. If you don't know, GOAT format was a format from 2004 to 2005. Um, it was competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! Um, but it featured a lot of cards that were from the first generation of sets um, uh, in the first generation of Yu-Gi-Oh! including uh, Thousand Eyes Restrict, Black Luster Soldier, Delinquent Duo, Graceful Charity, Scapegoat, um, which is uh, the namesake of this format. Um, and really the biggest thing uh, to take away from GOAT format was it was all about card advantage. So uh, small trade-offs, uh, trying to get make one card go uh, further than it would possibly go, um, like to convert one card uh, that does one specific thing and have it do multiple things over multiple turns. That's kind of the big thing that GOAT format was trying to accomplish, and so this is the GOAT deck um, that was around at that time that most people played. Um, now there are some slight variations in my build, uh, and I'll kind of go through them, um, but uh, I hope you enjoy. So, to start it off, uh, we'll start with the Flip Monsters. So, we have two copies of Magical Merchant. Um, this is, like, the best starter in the deck. Uh, when it flips face up, you are allowed to um, look at the top cards of your deck. Um, if there are... Uh, you keep looking at them until you find a spell or trap card. You add that spell and trap card to your hand, uh, and then you send your... Um, any monsters to the graveyard. So it just helps you dig your deck for those really good power spells. Uh, you play two copies of Magical Merchant, or sorry, uh, Magician of Faith, rather. Uh, Magician of Faith uh, lets you recur back your spells and traps from the graveyard. It is another flip monster as well. Uh, to reuse your flip monsters, you have two copies of Tsukiyomi. Um, Tsukiyomi is a spirit monster, so uh, at the end of your turn, it goes back to your hand but it lets you set one of uh, a, a monster on either player's side of the field. Uh, this is a very good combo card with a few other cards that we'll kind of go into later. And then, of course, uh, one copy of Morphing Jar, which uh, kind of helps you out uh, in grind games, helps you reset uh, your hand. It says uh, discard all, both players discard all cards in their hand, and then they draw five cards. Um, so really busted. Uh, I personally don't like this card as much as like most people, but I feel like it's a necessity to play just because you have to uh, win through grind games sometimes. So that's uh, all the flip monsters. Uh, for some big boys, we play two copies of Abyss Soldier. Now this is a card that um, not a lot of people are super big in in the standard GOAT deck. I personally think it's fantastic. It combos really well with... Uh, premature Burial and Call of the Haunted, as well as um, there are plenty of water monsters to get this effect off, and it's super beefy with uh, 1800 attack and 1300 defense. Now, it doesn't seem like a lot in today's game, but uh, back in 2004, 2005, this was the guy. Uh, the, this stat line is, is huge, so, um, uh, but not a lot of GOAT players really play it. Um, they feel, some some people I've talked to feel as though it's um, just kind of a big body in a deck that doesn't really need big bodies, but I feel like it's good uh, to play against other um, GOAT decks of the format, so um, it's, it's, it's a good card. And then to go with that, uh, one Tribe Infecting Virus and one Sinister Serpent. Uh, these are more water so that you can resolve Abyss Soldier's effect. Um, Abyss Soldier basically says discard a water, target a card on the field, and add it back to hand. So it's good. It's a good combo card. It outs a bunch of stuff. Tribe is another out. Um, it says you discard one card from your hand, uh, declare a type of monster on the field, and destroy all um, monsters with that type, either that you control or your opponent. 
So it's really good. And then uh, the one Sinister Serpent, each of your standby phases, you can add this card from your grave to your hand. So it's just a good recurrable card, and it combos well with these guys. So uh, very important to play Sinister Serpent in any GOAT deck, really. Uh, and then for more big bunguses, uh, shout out to uh, uh, MBT. <laughs> uh, Breaker the Magical Warrior, um, spot removal for spell and traps, also it can be a beater. Um, Azura Priest, uh, out scapegoats, it can attack all monsters your opponent controls, um, but it is a spirit monster so it goes back to hand at end phase, it's just a good out, uh, and it's beefy. Uh, DD Warrior Lady, when it battles an opponent's monster, you can banish uh, DD Warrior Lady plus the monster. Um, it battles, so it's good spot removal as well as breaker. And, of course, it's beefy. Uh, and then, as uh, some other good one of one Sengen. Uh, Sengen is when it's destroyed by battle. You can add a monster with 1,500 or less attack from your deck to your hand. So it gets you to a lot of your flips, gets you to a lot of your outs. It gets you to mostly everything. There's a reason why this card was at 1, because <laughs> uh, it searches, like, most of the deck. And then uh, one Spirit Reaper. I don't see a lot of lists play this guy. I think he's, like kind of, he puts a lot of pressure on your opponent. Uh, if you don't know what he does, um, one, he's searchable off Sangin, so that's great. Uh, he's got 300 attacks, so he's very small, but he can't be destroyed by battle, and he, when he attacks directly, uh, your opponent chooses one random card in their hand to discard to grave. So it's really, really good to um, apply pressure to your opponent, force them to out this card, uh, and I, I just like its uh, defensive capabilities as well. So it's like a super versatile card. Um, I think most Go decks should play this because it's it's a deck that like relies on versatility with all these like great one ofs. So I feel like this is really important to have in the deck as another great defensive uh, one of to search off of of Sangin and just mill through your deck to get it. So I I, I think this card is really essential, but. Um, you know, take it with a grain of salt. Um, and then for the last two monsters, we play one Air Knight Parshaf and one Black Luster Soldier Envoy at the beginning. Uh, these are your uh, pseudo win conditions. BLS is basically a win condition. Um, Air Knight is a nice card. It's good to recover off of uh, uh, Call of the Haunted or um, Premature Burial. It's also just a big, beefy card and gets you to draw more, so it digs through your deck. BLS is basically the win button of the deck. Um, it has 3k attack, so it's the by far the strongest monster in GOAT. Um, it's a free special summon if you have a... or It special summons itself if you have a dark and a light engrave and you banish them. Um, it can banish one card on the field, or it can uh, when it destroys a monster by battle, it can attack again. So, really, really good. This is the win button of the deck. Should be at 1. Understandable that it is at 1. Uh, but Aaronite puts in a lot of work as well. So, uh, that's it for the monsters. And then, to move on to the spells, which I think are kind of the most import important part, I play 2, uh, Scapegoat. Scapegoat is kind of the heart and soul of this deck. Um, it summons 4 uh, sheep tokens to your side of the field. 0-0 zero, zero attack. Um... Uh, or zero attack and zero defense. Uh, they don't really do anything on field, but they give you four monsters that your opponent has to knock into to get to your life points. So really, really good, and also it combos really well with Metamorphosis. Uh, Metamorphosis, super banned, never going to come back. <laughs> this card with Scapegoat lets you go into Thousand Eyes Restrict, uh, which if you don't know what that does, I'll kind of explain what it does later. But it is a very, very powerful card that outs a lot of things, plays a lot of good defense. Uh, Metamorphosis and Scapegoat are a great combination. And you can do some really cool combos with it. Um, so, yeah, Scapegoat, very, very important for the deck. I don't play three, though, because I think three is just kind of bricky. Um, I think two is perfect, especially with two Metamorphosis. And then for the Trinity... Uh, this is what they called the Trin Trinity back in the day. Uh, Pot of Greed, Delinquent Duo, and Graceful Charity. So these cards are all uh, insanely, insanely good one ofs. Um, Pot of Greed, you know, uh, no one really knows what it does, um, so we'll just kind of ignore that. 
Um, Delinquent Duo. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, Pot of Greed gets you uh, two draws uh, for free, which is stupid. Um, Delinquent Duo is very, very good. It's kind of like a reverse Pot of Greed. It takes two cards out of your opponent's hand, um, one that you, um, that you choose randomly and then one that your opponent chooses. Um, but yet, yeah, you do have to pay 1,000 life points. Still a great card. You can rip so many good things uh, off of Duo. And then Graceful Charity, uh, this is really, really good. Um, draw three cards from your deck and then discard two. Very, very good. Works really well with Sinister Serpent as well. Um, and then for other really busted one-ofs, uh, one Premature Burial. Uh, it's basically a Monster Reborn. Uh, Snatch Steel. Uh, mind Control, but uh, it has to be equipped and during every standby phase your opponent gains a thousand life. Doesn't really matter. You take a BLS with this, you win the game. <laughs> Uh, one Heavy Storm uh, just destroys all Speller Traps. Good good removal card. Uh, one MST. You know what MST does. Uh, and then that is it for the one-ofs. And then we play, for the last two spells, two copies of Nobleman of Crossout. Uh, great card to get rid of uh, any kind of flip monsters your opponent controls, uh, any kind of other cards your opponent has that are set that you think are going to be a big, big problem. Um, it just banishes them, so really, really good. And then two copies of Book of Moon. Uh, Book of Moon is a good combo piece. Uh, having it be a quick play spell helps you uh, when you're attacking. Your opponent plays like a battle trap, and you can set your monsters and have them not be destroyed. Great card. And then, of course, we move on to the traps. One of Torrental Tribute... Um, just blows up everything, uh, or all monsters. Uh, Call of the Haunted, another monster reborn. Mirror Force, the best battle trap. Uh, one Ring of the uh, Ring of Destruction. You can burn people for game with this. Uh, basically, you just target one card on the field, or uh, one monster rather. Um, destroy that monster, and you and your opponent both take damage equal to its attack. So this can actually tie you games, which is really interesting. It's a good spot removal card, but also it can help you um, OTK in certain uh, instances. Uh, one Sakuretsu Armor. This is a card that uh, I'm probably going to get a lot of hate for. A lot of GOAT players really like to run multiple copies, even three copies at times of Sakuretsu Armor. Personally, I don't think it's that good of a card because it's just kind of a one-for-one. -one. And your monsters don't really matter as much uh, as your spell and traps, in my opinion. So instead, I boosted uh, Dust Tornado up to two. It's basically a uh, trap card MST. But um, it's it's I think two Dust Tornado is way more important because your opponent... I know that a lot of opponents rely really, really heavily on their traps and their set cards. And you can nullify that with Dust Tornado super easily. So I think it's just better in most matchups. I don't think Sakuretsu Armor does nearly enough because most of the time your opponent's monsters are going to get a use, like one use out of their monsters anyways. And then if you blow it up with Sock, they're like, cool, whatever. I'm just going to set a bunch of back row. So if they can put a monster that doesn't do anything on the field and you have Dust Tornado, you can just blow up that. They have a monster that doesn't do anything and you can just play from there. So... I, that's just my reasoning for, for one stock. If you want to play multiples of it, that's fine. I get it. Um, but that's just what I think. And then moving on to the extra deck. So uh, a, a little weird thing about the extra deck. Um, in Back in 2004, 2005, you were able to just kind of, like, bring your binder to games and have it just filled with extra deck cards and just kind of pull your extra deck out of that binder. Now, that's kind of... Konami is kind of... Uh, or, or I think it was Upper Deck that was controlling Yu-Gi-Oh!, but whatever. Um, they found that to be a little weird, so they put a restriction on it and made it called the extra deck. Um, so the extra deck is uh, basically just all fusions, because only fusions were out. Um, it's only accessible through Metamorphosis. Um, I was thinking there are some decks out there that play Polymerization, uh, but they're kind of few and far between. Uh, this is kind of uh, what most GOAT decks use their extra deck for, is just for Metamorphosis targets. But, you know, regardless, it's still really powerful. It's still worthwhile. 
Um, but this is like the max that your extra deck should hold. Um, so I'll just go into it. Uh, 3,000 ice restrict. This is like a card that you kind of have to play at 3. Um, this is the card that you make off of Scapegoat. And also you have a bunch of other level 1s to go into this. It's also a dark, so it's good for BLS. Um, what it does is neither uh, no monster on the field can attack except Thousand Eyes, so already busted. Um, you can target one monster your opponent controls. You put that monster in your spell and trap card zone, and then Thousand Eyes Restrict gains attack and defense equal to that monster's attack and defense. Um, another a, a weird ruling about this card is also it doesn't say face up, so you can take your opponent's set like Morphing Jars or Magical Merchants, or Magician of Fates, or, or whatever, set them in your spell and trap card zone. Thousand Eyes Restrict doesn't gain any attack and defense, but it can still take that monster. Um, the only downside to the card really is um, you can only have one monster equipped, um, which is understandable. They had to have some way of this card not being like the dumbest card ever. Um, so... You kind of have to use this wisely. Um, it's really good to out uh, BLS and a bunch of other beefy cards, um, but very much a necessity to play at three. Um, so we'll leave that guy right up there. And then for level threes, uh, one Flame Ghost. Or you can play a Dragonus, uh, the Wicked Knight. Just depends on... Um, Flame Ghost is a dark, but uh, Dragonus has a little bit more attack. Doesn't really matter what you decide to play. Um, basically, they're just so that uh, you can use Metamorphosis on a Sangin and summon a level 3 um, monster from your uh, extra deck. Uh, and then you can use Sangin Effect to search for a card. It's a pretty good card overall. Um, next, we play one copy of Darkfire Dragon. Um, this is another card that we play only for... Um, a snatch deal target, so when you take your opponent's monster with a snatch deal, you can convert it into a dark fire dragon. It has the highest stats of any of the level fours uh, that are fusions at the time, and also it is a dark monster which sets up plays for your um, blockbuster soldier. And then for the level fives, we play one Reaper on the Nightmare. Um, this card's really dumb because it can steal games sometimes. Um, it's basically. Um, your uh, Spirit Reaper, but it has higher stats and also it can attack directly, so it's really, really good. Um, and then one Dark Balter, the Terrible. This is a Floodgate, which is really interesting. Um, when your opponent, or I believe it's uh, just your opponent, um, oh no, um, actually uh, it's both. <laughs> so, um, when a spell card is activated, a normal spell, so anything that's not a, um, an equip or a um, field spell or anything like that, just a normal plain spell card, mandatory, you have to negate it and pay a thousand life points. So it's a little bit annoying that you have to pay life points, but if you know your opponent's playing a deck with a bunch of uh, spells, I would recommend going into this very early uh, to kind of shut them down while your life is still high and force them to out it. Uh, so very good. And then uh, one Fiend Skull Dragon. This is, uh, I believe it negates traps. I haven't read... Th the problem with these cards are um, you don't really go into them super often and they're very situational, so you might have to read them occasionally like I have to do right now. Uh, <laughs> So when it attacks, that's right, um, so when it attacks a flip monster, uh, you negate the effects of the flip monster that it destroys by battle, and then also um, uh, it can negate the uh, effects of trap cards that uh, target it. So uh, it's pretty, pretty good in any case of battle, um, even though its stats are 2k, which is not like super high for uh, a fusion summon, but whatever. Um, and then we also play, uh, for the level 6s, Ojama King, which is a really dumb card. Uh, blocks 3 zones, so it shuts down your, your opponent from playing Scapegoat. Uh, setting up a bunch of plays uh, in, like, for most combo decks, this card's really good. And with 3k defense, it's going to be a huge wall that uh, BLS is the only real card that can get over it. Uh, and um, there are a few other cards, but uh, battle-wise, you have to get rid of this with something really, really strong. So, great card. Uh, and then Ryu Senshi uh, is another one. 
Uh, I believe it negates trap cards. Uh, it's it's kind of like the same thing uh, that Dark Balter is, but um, as a as a level six, super situational. I like rarely go into it. Uh, and then Dark Blade, the Dragon Knight. Um, this card's really interesting. It's a really good out to a lot of Chaos decks, which I'll kind of show you uh, in a, a shameless plug. I'll show you in another deck profile, uh, one of my favorite decks, um, which is uh, Chaos Thunder Dragon. But regardless, uh, it, when it deals damage um, uh, by battle, you can banish up to three monsters in your opponent's graveyards, so you can shut down players from playing BLS and getting to some good cards. And then last, for the level 7s, we play uh, One Last Warrior from Another Planet. Really, really dumb. Not a lot of goat decks play 7s, um, so you rarely will go into this, as well as uh, Twin Headed Thunder Dragon. Um, you really only play these uh, in case you're playing some kind of rogue strategy. There's not a whole lot of decks that play 7s, but um, these are two like really, really busted blowout cards. Um, that you can take with Snatch Deal and then make these. Uh, Last Warrior says, uh, destroy all other monsters you control, and then neither player can summon monsters, which is really, really dumb, um, especially in a format where normal summons are, like, really, really important, uh, even though your opponent still can set. And Twin Hunted Thunder Dragon is literally just a beat stick. There's no other reason uh, that it's in here other than just being a big, beefy card. And then the last card uh, for the eight, we play one Gatling Dragon. Um, Gatling Dragon and Thousand Eyes Restrict are really the only ones, and, and of course the level three. Um, those are probably the ones that you must play. Uh, you could play a five as well, like Dark Balter. Um, you could play a six if you really wanted to. But Gatling Dragon, Thousand Eyes, and any of the level threes are like the real essential ones. Um, Gatling Dragon is important because it helps you, uh, because you can't attack the turn you use BLS's Banish effect. You can um, make a Gatling Dragon uh, with Metamorphosis, and then you're able to attack and also use its pretty interesting effect. Um, you flip three coins, and I believe if two of them are heads... Um, oh, no, 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 I, that's, the, uh, that's the original uh, Barrel Dragon. Uh, you toss uh, a coin three times and destroy a number of monsters on the field equal to the number of heads. I rarely use the effect. I, I just kind of make this to, to get some damage in. Um, and then, of course, my opponent can't um, snatch steal my BLS. They have to snatch steal this, which is less good. Uh, so, very good card. Um, so, yeah, that is the deck. Uh, I don't have a side deck because... I don't really intend on playing this in, like, huge tournaments. I just kind of, like, play it for fun with some friends. Um, and, yeah, uh, I really recommend trying out GOAT. It's a lot of fun. Um, very inexpensive right now just because of uh, some of the reprints that are available. Um, it's just a really fun time, and I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more Yu-Gi-Oh! content. Uh, um, no. Okay. I <laughs> uh, hope you guys enjoyed, and uh, hopefully I'll get some new deck profiles up in the future. So, take care, guys.